My name is Joan Marie Gallant. I'm an Alberta author. People often ask me, how did you come to be published? And the truth is, I've been writing for a very long time. When I was a young girl, about nine years old, I was already making books. I made a book of crafts, a book of stories of poems, pages of poetry, and I had a lot of fun drawing pictures and putting my words together. And it's kind of funny, this, this book of crafts was so writing nonfiction, even as a young girl. I always uh, liked fiction, but I also love nonfiction. And the books I most frequently buy seem to be nonfiction. So it kind of makes sense that I ended up writing um, that, that style of book. One of the first books I wrote was a book about how to take care of a little bird called a budgie. Budgies are members of the parrot family, but they're not very big. They're small, and you can teach them to talk. And I was teaching my bird how to talk. It's really, really boring to teach a bird how to talk, but it's really, really cool to have a talking bird. So I, I tried to do it. So the way you do it is you hold your bird on your finger and you pick a, a simple word. My bird's name was Pepper, so I thought I'll teach my budgie to say Pepper. So I had to go like this. Pepper, 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 over and over and over and over again. The recommendation was to do it four times a day for 10 to 15 to 20 minutes at a time. It's really, really boring. And so I thought, wouldn't it be great if my mom would help me? And also I was going away on my very first ski trip and my mom was going to be taking care of my bird. And I wanted to make sure she knew everything that she had to do. So I actually wrote a nonfiction book about how to take care of your bird and teach your bird how to talk. So my mom did help me out and together we got that bird talking. One day my bird went, Pepper! And after he learned how to say his name, he started to learn things that we weren't even trying to teach him. I write a lot of um, astronomy books and science books, and I love to stay up late and look at the night sky, so I have a hard time getting up in the morning. Every day, my mom would come in my bedroom to wake me up for school, but first she'd wake up the bird. She'd go over to the bird cage, she'd lift the cover off the cage, and she'd lean down and she'd go, Good morning, Pepper. She loved this bird. She loved me too, but she would say, Get up, Joan. I wouldn't get up. I would lay there like a blob. And my mom would say, hurry up. And after a while, I'd say, I'm coming. Well, my bird started to learn all of those things in a row. Good morning, Pepper. Get up, Joan. Hurry up. I'm coming. So I got up. So the first books I was writing were books about things that I'm interested in. Everybody says you should write about what you're interested in. When I was about 12 years old, the Edmonton Journal, the weekly newspaper in Edmonton, had a page just for kids. You could find pen pals there, you could enter contests, and one day I entered a writing contest. I wrote a poem and I mailed it into the Edmonton Journal, and I did not win the contest. But something good still happened. My name was in the paper. It said, Joan Marie Gallot, Honorable Mention. Well, you know what it's like when there's a contest. There might be first, second, and third place. That doesn't mean third or that doesn't mean fourth fifth and sixth didn't do a good job right it just means there's not enough prizes to go around you're not going to get a, a ribbon or a medal but that doesn't mean you didn't do a good job and because my name was in the paper something else could happen i got a letter from the editor of the shirley park newspaper and the editor said dear joan i see you're a writer and you live in shirley park would you like to write for the newspaper we'll pay you for it well at that time i had a job delivering the newspaper now I was going to write for the newspaper. I thought this was great, but I had a big problem. I needed an idea. What was he going to write about? Everybody says, write about what you know. I was 12 years old in grade eight. I thought, what do I know? But then I thought of that bird book I wrote and how I like birds and nature and wildlife. And I thought about the birds in my backyard and something that they'd been doing lately. We had some birds called tree swallows. And whenever I went near this birdhouse, these, these little tree swallows, I'm not talking about great big eagles or owls or anything ferocious, but these little tree swallows would attack me. They'd swoop at me and dive bomb and try and scare me away from their nest. And I didn't want them to desert their, their eggs or their chicks when they were born. So I was careful to stay away. But one day I could hear peep, peep, peep coming out of the birdhouse and I really wanted to see the chicks. So I looked around and I couldn't see the parent birds anywhere. So I got a hold of a chair and I dragged it up and I peeked inside that birdhouse. And out of nowhere, these parent birds came swooping and diving and trying to scare me away. I thought it was kind of funny. So I, I got out of there and I thought, why don't I write about the birds in my backyard? And this is the first article that I ever had published called The Tree Swallow. 
and it was a story about the birds in my backyard. And I got paid for how long the column was that I wrote. Well, I started writing pretty long sentences. Uh, then you can see I have what's called the bird column. It was a weekly newspaper, so I actually had a problem. Every single week, I needed to come up with a new idea. I thought, what am I going to do? Well, sometimes authors get ideas from other things they read. That's one of the reasons why it's really important, if you want to be a good writer, that you want to be a reader. You want to read because we get ideas from things that we read, uh, as well as from real life. And reading helps us to be better writers. So I would read, you know, I'd read the kids' page in the, in the journal, but I'd also read some of the rest of the paper. Um, I would read the headlines. I would sometimes read some of the, the news stories. I would read the comics. And there was a columnist, a person who wrote a column every single week, and her name was Ann Landers. And she asked people to send in questions about their personal problems. And if she knew the, uh, well, she would come up with some answers and give them advice. For example, if somebody said, um, Dear Ann Landers, I can't sleep at night because my husband snores so loudly. What should I do? Sign sleepless. She would write back something like, Dear sleepless, why don't you just put a pillow over his head? No, she wouldn't say that. She'd say, um, why don't you sleep in another room and give, give advice? And I thought, well, maybe I can have an advice column. Not about relationships, but what about birds? I've had good luck with that. So I started asking people to send me questions about birds. And if I knew the answer, I could, I could put it in the newspaper. If I didn't know the answer, I could um, go to my bookshelf. I could find books on birds. I could look, look things up, put it in my own words, and put it in the newspaper. And if I didn't have a book, I could go to the library, and I could dig around until I found the answer. I could do some research. And so that's what I did, and I ended up writing a bird column every week with questions and answers. So people who would send me questions about birds, sometimes people phoned me and they said they found an injured bird and asked me to take care of it. So then I had to go to the library and do some research on how to care for injured birds. So writing the bird column was a lot of fun and that's how I got started being published at the age of 12.